Hello and welcome back to the Happy Farm Life Podcast. My name is Dr. Sierra Richard, PharmD, BCPPS, and I don't normally flaunt my credentials around whenever I start a podcast episode, but today's a little bit different because we are talking about the board certification that got me that last set of credentials, BCPPS, that I'm going to be talking about today. It's been about a year since I got my board certification at the time that I am recording this, and I can confidently say it was the right decision for me. However, I understand that this might not be the right decision for everyone. So in today's episode, I'm going to be talking about some of the pros and cons of getting a board certification through the Board of Pharmacy Specialties. Before I dive into this episode, I want to acknowledge the fact that pharmacists can get credentialing outside of the Board of Pharmacy Specialties. They can get board certified in HIV, diabetes education, asthma education. So there are a lot of other opportunities out there. However, because my experience is with the Board of Pharmacy Specialties, that's the area I want to focus in today. The Board of Pharmacy Specialties, or BPS, has these certifications in order to help show extra training and merit in a particular area. There are very stringent requirements not only to take the examination where you're required to have a specific amount of training or years of experience, but also after you are done, you have to keep up with a rigorous amount of continuing education credit before you can recertify yourself. Or you have to take a recertification exam, which I don't know anybody who would actually willingly choose that. I know some people who didn't get their CE who have had to do that. But let's just say it's a really hard exam and you don't want to take it again if you don't have to, at least in the cases that I have seen with friends or colleagues who have taken the exam and gotten their certification. I definitely could tell you I do not want to take it again. Currently, BPS offers 14 different board certifications. You have pharmacotherapy, which is the most generalizable and requires the least amount of training prior to taking the exam. There's ambulatory care, cardiology, compounded sterile products, critical care, emergency medicine, geriatric, infectious disease, nuclear, nutrition support, oncology, pediatric, psychiatric, and solid organ transplantation. So there are many different options depending on where you are practicing within the profession of pharmacy that you can get certification in. And the qualifications are a little bit different based on each program. So if you are wanting to do pharmacotherapy, the requirements are going to be different than if you want to do BCPPS, which is what I did. And that is a pediatric pharmacy specialty area. If you are a new practitioner pharmacist or still in residency, it's important to start thinking about board certification early, mainly because of the studying requirements. I'll talk about that later, but you are in that mode of studying. And so if you just finished your PGY-1, you're eligible for pharmacotherapy. After you finish a PGY-2, you may be eligible for one of the specific specialty areas, depending on what your PGY-2 was done in. For me, I wanted to go into pediatrics and I did a PGY-1. I did not do a PGY-2. So I had to do two additional years practicing with more than 50% of my time spent in pediatrics in order to set for the exam, which was pretty easy because I was working night shift at a women's and children's hospital at the time. So for those two years I was working night shift, definitely more than 50% of my time was directed towards my pediatric patients. Let's talk about the pros of getting board certified with the Board of Pharmacy Specialties. So the first thing is, if you get board certification, you have a competitive edge against somebody who doesn't have it. Having a board certification doesn't automatically make you a better pharmacist, but it does show the amount of rigor you're willing to go through in order to show that this is a specialty that you are passionate about and very knowledgeable in. Some employers will require a board certification in order to even apply for a position. So if you want to be a clinical pharmacist specialist in pediatrics, there are several hospitals that will require you to get your board certification within a certain amount of time of hire, or they may choose somebody who has that board certification over you if it's a close rank because that is a requirement and they already have that requirement checked off the list. If you go through the process of studying and taking your board certification exam, Most people will come out with enhanced clinical knowledge and skills because you are taking the time to study very in-depth knowledge about a particular specialty, and that requires a lot of extra time and work. Once you've completed that initial certification, you also have to go through large amounts of recertification CE credit to avoid having to retake the exam. Just as an example, I'm required to do 100 hours of continuing education credits in a seven-year period specified in pediatrics in order to maintain my BCPPS. 
100 hours is a lot of time and work, so you are going to be very knowledgeable and are required to stay up to date with information in that specialty area. Having a board certification in an area also will give you some recognition and credibility already because those credentials are behind your name and others who have taken it automatically know how much work it is. And also there are fewer pharmacists that have that credential than your general PharmD. It's kind of crazy to me that the PharmD is a doctorate and that's the entry level for our profession. However, many positions require more than that now, additional training in order to get your foot in the door. Just to give you an example of how few people have these certifications, with the pediatric certification, there are less than 2,000 of the 300 plus thousand pharmacists in the United States that have that credential. If somebody knows that or they're in the profession and understand what that credentialing means, they realize I'm one of the very few people in the United States that have that specialty area. In many cases, there is a financial benefit to getting your board certification because it comes with additional pay incentives from your employer. Not only that, if you decide to move into another role in the future, you have more negotiation power because you have a board certification on top of your PharmD than if you just had your PharmD and were working in a particular area. For me, one of the big pros to getting this board certification was I felt like it was the right thing to do for my patients because I knew it was going to push me to be a better pharmacist, to keep up to date more so than if I didn't have that requirement. And it was really going to push me as a clinician. I also have to say there was quite the sense of accomplishment whenever I found out that I passed because that was the hardest exam I have taken. It was much harder than the NAPLEX. And I was so excited to see that all the hard work I had done going through a PGY-1 that was focused in pediatrics, working in a pediatric institution, pushing myself to be better every single day for my patients had paid off in a different way. However, I would be lying to you if I told you it was all sunshine and roses when it comes to getting your board certification. It was a rigorous process, and so I want to talk about some of the cons that come with getting your board certification. Going for board certification is a large time commitment. If you are out of practice from studying or maybe not doing this directly after your PGY-2, you're going to have to put in some time and hours into studying. For me, I did over 20, almost 30 hours of continuing education credits as I was trying to get caught up and relearn some of the material that was not as relevant in my day-to-day -day job. If you have a full-time job when you start studying and you're out of the groove of studying, it can be a lot harder to get that back into your normal routine. Board certification also comes with a lot of financial burden. So the exam itself is $600 in order for you to take. There are also many different preparatory courses that you can choose from depending on what specialty area that you are trying to go into. And those can cost several hundred dollars in order for you to complete. There are also very few places in the United States that you can take the exam, so you may have to drive quite a distance in order to get to a site where you can test. For me, I had to get a hotel and pay gas to drive a couple hours away to get to an exam site. If your employer does not provide professional time in order to take exams, you may have to take vacation or personal time to take the exam because it is several hours long and will take at least half of your day. Additionally, the continuing education credit that you need for recertification is going to cost you in the long run. I mentioned earlier that for my recertification with BCPPS, it's 100 hours of continuing education over seven years. But the thing that I didn't mention earlier is the restrictions around that continuing education. So say a local pharmacy student does a presentation and it's related to pediatric cystic fibrosis regimens. That's a big one that people like to hit. And so they can present on that. It is pediatric based, but if it's not certified by specific organizations, it's not going to count towards my board certification. So that limits where you can get your CE from. That means it's going to cost you somewhere. For me, I'm using a program through ASHP that is for new practitioners that does reduce the cost. But over that period of time, plus the time that I used it whenever I was studying, it's like 800 and some dollars over that seven year period. Additionally, each year you also have a recertification fee of $125. And it really sucked because I took my exam in the fall and I didn't get officially like certified until January because that's how long it takes. I found out in like November and then there's a waiting period. So January is when I was officially like board certified, could use everything. And I was only board certified for like two or three months when they charged me that annual fee. So I just spent the $600 and all the money for testing materials and having to travel, spending money on a hotel. 
And then I got hit with that fee. So that, that really sucked. Another con of doing board certification is balancing your board certification requirements with your regular life. So not only do you have to think about this from a studying perspective, like how much time are you going to spend ahead of time? But if your employer doesn't offer you ways to get those continuing education hours covered during your work days, then you're going to be spending that 100 hours outside of work doing continuing education credits. And that is on top of your requirements for the state board, which are often different and very little of that will overlap. Speaking of CE requirements, I want to let you know that this is one big mistake that people make when they are a new practitioner is not keeping up with their CE requirements or knowing which types of CE that they need in order to meet their state board licensing requirements. And then if you add this on top, it's going to make things even more messy. So if you want to avoid some of the most common mistakes that new pharmacists make, you could check out my free guide, which is five common mistakes that new pharmacists make. And it goes through the mistakes and also how to avoid them. You can get that absolutely free at happyfarmlife.com forward slash mistakes. Board certification may not be the best fit for you if something like a master's program or another certification is a better option for your career goals. So that's something you want to think about because if you go down these roads and these paths with board certification, do you want to maintain them? Honestly, for financial purposes, you probably want to at least get through one recertification cycle. So keep this for 14 years before you let it lapse. It's also important to consider the pass rate for these exams. So if you go and check to see what the normal pass rate is, it's going to vary based on which specialty you're looking at, but the average is between 50 and 70%. For example, pediatrics on a regular basis is around a third of people will not pass. So the pass rate is around 66% on average. That means a lot of extremely qualified people, people who have a PGY-1 or have worked two years in pediatrics, somebody who's worked four years in pediatrics, or somebody who has done a PGY-2 in pediatrics, these are who are taking these exams and a third of them are still not passing. I don't say that to scare you or discourage you, but just to say it's not a easy walk into this exam and pass. You do have to put some time and energy into studying for it. So with all of those pros and cons in mind, here are some things to keep in mind when you're making the decision on whether or not you want to do board certification. Does board certification match up with your career goals? Does this particular specialty certification meet the goals that I want to achieve in the next 10 years in my career? Will it help me get the jobs that I'm hoping to get in the future? How will this board certification help you in the future if you decide to change employers? Will doing the board certification right now cause financial strain for you? If I'm being completely transparent, it cost me a couple thousand dollars between my travel expenses, the cost of the exam, and my study materials during that first few months around my board certification. So can you handle that right now? If you just finished residency and are trying to get your footing, you may want to wait until the spring cycle instead of the fall if that financial strain is going to be too much for you. Additionally, if you're getting ready to study, do you have the time to study right now? And are you going to have the time and want to put forth the effort to keep up with your continuing education credits for the next seven years? Yes, I know that's a long commitment, but it's something you want to think about. I also encourage people to reach out to mentors who have taken the exam before and get advice and feedback from them. They can give you more information on how they studied, what information might be relevant, or what books they used instead of a course that might reduce some of your cost. They also could let you know based on your skills if they think you're ready for the exam and how much studying you might need in order to prepare. For those of you who are watching or interested in taking the BCPPS exam, I will leave a couple YouTube videos I have down below from my experience of both filling out the application to take the exam, as well as how I studied and prepared and my test day experience. So you can check those out in the description or show notes below. In conclusion, the decision to do board certification depends on your personal career goals, your financial stability, and the time commitment that you have in order to do so. I urge you to reflect on this carefully and make sure that this is the right decision for you and your career. You don't want to spend all the time, energy, and money that is required in order to take this exam if it's just not a good fit for your career. If you have any questions, concerns, or just want advice, I will leave my email down below. You can reach out to me. I can share my personal experience with the exam and also check out those videos that I mentioned before, link down below, as well as the additional resources I have linked. With that, make sure you check out my free guide for new pharmacists, that five common mistakes that new pharmacists make. You can get that at happyfarmlife.com forward slash mistakes. 
And thank you all for watching or listening. And until next time, keep on living your happy farm life. Bye.